Hello my small fat adapted family and welcome back to the Great Keto Bake Off. For anyone that is new here, really quickly this is how it goes. I watch the Great British Bake Off live at 8pm. I pick one singular recipe to keto-fi and I stay up late writing a recipe. When I get up, I get ingredients and here I am. I am trusting my ability to keto-fi high carb recipes in a very short space of time. Now this does mean that there is a chance, like there is in the show, that things will go wrong. And if it does, you get to see all of that on camera. So episode four of The Great British Bake Off was dessert week. The signature was pavlovas, the technical was sticky toffee pudding, and the showstopper was dessert with a patterned jacond cake collar. This week was a tricky one because these are some quite difficult tastes and textures to ketofy, but then there are some that actually lend themselves to being ketogenic. You know, pavlovas are egg whites and cornstarch. Jacond cakes are made from almond flour and cake flour. And then there's sticky toffee pudding, which is made of dates, sugar, caramel, flour. So, of course, for week four of the Great British Bake Off, I will be ketofying sticky toffee pudding. This will include most aspects of the technical challenge, having mini keto-friendly puddings or cakes. It will have a three ingredient caramel sauce to go with it, or a toffee sauce, and it will also have a creme anglaise on the side. And a creme anglaise is basically just a thin English custard. So in terms of ingredients, you will need for the cake, 33 grams of almond flour, 42 grams of coconut flour, 25 grams of protein powder. I am using sticky toffee pudding protein powder by my protein. It's nice and low carb and sticky toffee pudding flavored. Quarter of a cup of sweetener, preferably a brown sugar replacement. I am using sucrine gold. Half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda or baking soda. One teaspoon of baking powder. Quarter of a teaspoon of salt. 70 grams of coconut oil that is soft. One teaspoon of toffee extract. You can also use vanilla extract, but I highly suggest toffee. I'm actually using New Naturals salted caramel syrup. I have a review coming out for this on the channel very, very soon. Two eggs and 158 ml of water. Then for the three ingredient toffee sauce or caramel sauce, you will need eight sugar-free hard butter candies, 120 ml of cream, and half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I'm using that uh, syrup. Then for the creme anglaise, you will need 75 ml of almond milk, unsweetened, 75 ml of cream, half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, two egg yolks, and one tablespoon of sweetener. I am using just standard granulated erythritol. So the first thing we're going to need to do is actually make our toffee sauce because we are going to need it for baking the puddings. So I decided to go with this sauce instead of creating a keto caramel completely from scratch, just because I've seen a lot of variations of it kicking about online and it's really simple. It seemed really interesting and I really want a nice thick sort of toffee caramel sauce and I believe this will give me that. So what you wanna do is you wanna pop your cream in a medium saucepan over a low medium heat. Then I'm gonna add my vanilla extract and just give it a good stir. And I'm going to leave this stirring occasionally until it is gently simmering. It is very gently simmering. So now I'm gonna get my sugar-free butter candy and I'm going to add them into the simmering cream. And I'm basically just gonna turn the heat down a little bit and just stir this and keep stirring it until all of the butter candy has melted and it's given me a nice thick glossy butterscotch coloured sauce. I'm not getting the colour I want though, it's more of a condensed milk colour and I really wanted that toffee look to it. I've decided to just add one more Werther's because it does need to have just a little bit more buttery taste to it but it's very close. Why did that just pop? So this sauce is not the colour I want it to be, it's not a deep golden toffee colour but it is beautifully thick. Is there going to be enough here? So we're going to set this toffee sauce aside. 
until we knead it in a little bit. So now it's time to actually make the puddings themselves. The first thing you want to do, as always, is preheat your oven. It is going to go on 175 Celsius, which is 350 Fahrenheit. Then you want to prepare some muffin molds or sticky toffee pudding molds if you have them by either greasing them well or using silicon, which I have behind me, silicon ones. I think it's going to be six that this is going to make, but I could be wrong, so just bear with me on that number. We'll find out in a minute. But first, we need to mix all of the dry ingredients together. So we have almond flour. I'm adding coconut flour. Oh, that's nice. Sticky toffee pudding whey. My sucre and gold, my brown sugar replacement. We've got some salt going in, some bicarb, and some baking powder. And that is going to get mixed until it is well combined. Then in a separate large bowl, I'm adding my eggs, my water, my vanilla extract, or in my case, my syrup, and then the soft coconut oil, all of the wet ingredients for the cake. These wet ingredients all get mixed up until they are nice and well combined. When you are happy that your wet ingredients are combined enough, we're going to add half of the dry ingredients into the wet and give it a mix to combine it. Then we're going to add the other half of the dry ingredients and mix that. Okay, that looks nice and well combined, so we will pop that to the side and get our prepared muffin tins. I actually had laid out 12 muffin molds, but I've gone back to my idea with six because there's no way this is gonna do 12 of them. This toffee sauce looks so beautiful, but there is so little of it. What I'm going to do is get a teaspoon and spread it in the base of my muffin tins. So then I'm going to take my cake mixture, which is still pretty moist, but it's got a lot more structure to it. And I'm going to fill the muffin tin about three quarters of the way up. Okay, that's one done. Let's see how many we can get with the amount of cake batter that we have. Flatten it with my fingers. That is two. We could have been so good together My dogs are barking, they won't stop Oh my gosh, we're gonna get eight. So these will go in the oven initially for 15 minutes. I'm kind of expecting anywhere between 15 to 25 minutes. I'll check them at 15, probably check them again at 18 if they're still in. And then it will be time to make the creme anglaise when they're just cooling a little bit. Okay, so the sticky toffee puddings are now out of the oven. They are cooling over there. They took 18 minutes. They have risen a little bit. I'm not too worried because I can shave off the top if I need to, to flip them over. But we're not gonna worry about that right now. We're gonna get on with making the creme anglaise. So the creme anglaise is really simple to make, but it is one of those things that you have to be very particular about how you do it to stop the yolks from curdling. Let's hope that's not a foreshadow for what's about to happen. So we're gonna go back over to our cooker and I've got a pan here with almond milk in it. I'm going to put it on a low to medium heat and I'm going to add my cream and my vanilla extract and just give that a quick whisk to combine and then I will bring this to a gentle simmer as well. Whilst that milk is warming up, I'm going to take my egg yolks and add my erythritol and I'm going to beat this until it is nice and pale and fluffy. I've just changed my whisk over for a smaller one because I really need to be able to get that quick action when it comes to actually whisking everything together to make the custard. That is the difficult part, and that is what stops it from going curdled, is continuously, continuously whisking. What we are going to do in a second, because it's nearly ready, is pour about a quarter of a cup's worth of the hot cream into the egg yolks and the sweetener, and then that is going to get very quickly beaten to bring it to a temper, basically. So we're getting this, the egg yolks, ready to go into hot sauce. So about that much goes in there, and that very quickly gets whisked. I'm going to pour the egg yolks in, and I'm going to rapidly whisk. The whisk is not gonna stop until I get a nice thick sauce that coats the back of a spoon. I don't think this is gonna thicken to coat the back of a spoon, you know? I don't understand why it feels like it's 100% froth. That doesn't make sense. Can you strain froth off? Oh yeah. Okay, then with my frothy custard milk, I'm just gonna pour, that's one part of this constructed. The toffee will go in this one. Just a little small bit of that. 
Um, it looks like an upside down muffin, which is kind of exactly what it is. Uh, <laughs> then we will get a bit of our toffee sauce over the top of it, give it some more toffee. There it is. Oh, don't drip out like that, please. Can we have some enthusiasm, please? Oh, for crying out loud, give me this. I just want that to trickle down the sides naturally. Okay, let's uh, let's have a try, shall we? Oh, cutting into it is beautiful and soft. And then the inside looks quite gritty and grainy. And taste-wise, you get a lot of that topping taste, that, that Werther's butter candy taste, or any butter candy taste. I need to try one without that topping on it, because that is, that is really taking over everything. The cake itself doesn't really have a taste. I'm getting the textures of almond flour and coconut flour, but I'm not getting any taste, which isn't a bad thing, but you would have thought after putting toffee whey protein in and salted caramel syrup in it, and then the little bit of toffee that I put in the base of the muffins, you think I would get a toffee taste. And I'm just getting delicate sponge. It's nice, a bit gritty, but then when you add that toffee syrup on top, it transforms the taste into a butter candy toffee taste. That syrup is delicious. And the syrup works with a cake because I find it kind of masks that grittiness a little bit. Oh, let me just wash it down with some... Uh, Creme anglaise. There's nothing wrong with it, it's just not thick enough. It is literally, look. It's liquid. I mean, of course it's a liquid, but it's it's completely... Oh, what's the word? <laughs> Wet? That's not the word. Thin. Thin is the word I'm looking for. Nothing has been a disaster. And I've come away with a butterscotch sort of toffee caramelly sauce that I adore, but otherwise... It's kind of just there. A cake is actually really nice with the creme anglaise. But that says a lot about the cake, that it's really nice with other things. It's a, it's a nice concept. It executes okay, but it is not like star baker quality in the slightest. Now, in terms of macronutrients, for the sticky toffee pudding, if you make eight, each pudding is 211 calories, 18 grams of fat, six grams of protein, and 2.2 net carbs. It's been an anticlimactic week for sure, but thank you for joining me on this incredibly chaotic series. Join me again next week for German week. But with that being said, that is all for this video. Leave a like if you found it interesting, insightful, or helpful. Subscribe for more keto content. Any questions, any comments, any queries, anything down below. Keep calm, keto on. Thanks for watching.